All right, can everybody hear me pretty well? Okay. Um, so those of you that know me um, know that polls are sort of what I'm passionate about. And, um, and so I'm glad that somebody actually asked this question because this is kind of something that I do um, every day. Um, so just for those of you who aren't familiar with it, uh, hyperimmune plasma is it's plasma that has a higher titer of a specific antibody. So remember from immunology classes and things like that, antibodies are the disease fighters. It's what your immune system makes in order to fight um, uh, pathogens, you know, disease and foreign substances, which are called the antigen. Uh, so this is obtained by pulling plasma from, from donors that are vaccinated against specific um, target bacteria and viruses that you want to prevent your foal from having. So after the vaccination, the donor's um, immune system forms these antibodies um, against these diseases that can then be passed to the, the neonate um, via plasma ad administration. And so by passive immunity, I'm, we mean that the, the foal doesn't have to produce those antibodies on its own. It's given to them through this plasma donation. So the question is, does it work? So in my clinical experience, for what it's worth, those of you that have worked with me, you know that I'm a fan of plasma. It's, there's a lot of benefits of plasma beyond just the hyperimmune um, portion of it. It, um, you know, it increases their protein and their fluid volume, um, clotting factors, enzymes, platelets, you name it. There's a lot of good stuff in plasma. And it gives, um, by giving these foals um, a, a liter of plasma after birth, it gives them a little bit of a boost maybe before you even know that the foal may, um, may need it. And I just, um, I, I'm a believer in it, but that's, like I said, it's my clinical experience, um, that's for sure. So um, other veterinarians feel this way too. Some of the diseases that we, um, we are trying to um, prevent are rhodococcus equine pneumonia, big problem here in central Kentucky, and then um, diarrheas in the first um, week of a foal's life can be life-threatening. Um, and so some of the causes of those diarrheas are rotavirus, salmonella, clostridium, um, things like that. And so if this hyperimmune plasma can help us kind of prevent um, or deal with some of those diseases, we, we kind of, um, we want to know. So. Um, so here's Dr. Lily Haywood actually um, tubing this foal um, right here. Sorry, 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 sorry. I meant uh, to, uh, there we go, give away all my secrets here. Um, anyway, she is tubing this plasma to this foal orally here. So um, normally the rhodococcus hyperimmune plasma, um, we like to give IV, but some of these formulations um, also can target GI pathogens and can be given orally just so as to thought to kind of give a local antibody protection. Um, so it can be given either way, but a lot of farms prefer to give a little bit um, orally um, just to kind of fight some of these, these um, uh, enter these GI diseases. Um, so clinically, this seems to actually work really well, um, particularly in the face of a diarrheal outbreak. Um, the, the one thing that I will tell you, though, it is important to identify these specific pathogens. So when your veterinarian asks you, hey, um, especially in the first week or two of these foals' life, do you want to um, test this and, and see what's, what this is, um, you should say yes, because, um, you know, you say, well, is it going to change our treatment? Yeah, it actually, it can change the treatment because certain um, bacteria will require different, um, different antibiotics, and, and they all require supportive care. We get that, but can, it can really, really help, and it can help you pick one of these plasmas to, to use on your farm to target um, these diseases to try to prevent them from um, affecting subsequent foals um, in your foaling barn and things like that. So, so it, is, it is very important. Uh, um, so it's one thing for me to stand up here and tell you how great it is, but is there any research supporting this? Um, well, uh, most of the work actually has been done and research has been done on um, with rhodococcus equi um, plasma. Um, so, which is, and rhodococcus is a little bit of a sneaky, slippery devil that um, it, it doesn't always play by the rules, but, but most of the research has been done there. So some of the earlier studies in the, in the 90s and 2000s, sorry, I keep doing that, um, failed to produce convincing evidence. It was like, well, 
it might help, but there's not any statistical difference in these foals. And so we kind of said, well, clinically we think it helps even though we don't have the research to prove this, so we kind of kept doing it. Um, and that was um, until more recently, some work done here locally at um, the University of Kentucky, um, Sands, Loina Chan and Hora Hoff in uh, 2016 um, was a little bit more optimistic. So, um, so in this challenge study, um, they, um, they had nine foals that were given hyperimmune plasma um, kind of within probably 12 hours of birth, um, the first day anyway, um, and nine were controlled that did not receive the hyperimmune plasma. Um, they were all challenged the first week. Um, with the virulent um, rhodococcus equi, and meaning they actually put this virulent bacteria into their lungs and made them get pneumonia. Um, so only one out of the hyperimmune um, plasma foals and four out of the um, nine control foals developed clinical pneumonia. And you might think, well, is that significant or not? But the most um, uh, significant part of this study was that these um, the uh, hyperimmune plasma pools had lower ultrasound scores, meaning when you scan their lungs and measured the size of these abscesses in area, they had smaller abscesses and less, um, and less numbers of these abscesses as well. Um, they had lower white blood cell um, counts and fibrinogen, um, which if it's higher, it means they have infection. Obviously, if it's lower, it's normal. And then they also had a higher amount of serum, um, bronchi alveolar, um, lavage fluid, um, IgG than the control, meaning, this is the most important part of this, meaning when they um, looked at this um, fluid that kind of bathes your alveoli in your, in your lungs, your air sacs, they actually found this um, antibody within that fluid, meaning for us that you're at, we were actually, are, are actually getting this, um, these antibodies where they need to be to fight this disease. So, uh, so that was very encouraging for us and just kind of confirmed what we've sort of thought clinically all along um, in this study. It was a very well put together, very um, detailed, well executed study. So, um, so we all kind of felt pretty good about that. Um, so, so the study conclusion was that rhodococcus equi hyperimmune plasma actually um, does decrease pneumonia severity um, in a randomized experimental challenge. Um, so there is no vaccine available, so for now, we are just going to um, keep doing our heart immune plasma because it's pretty much the best protection that we have and then it's what we can do to try to give these foals a little bit more ammunition to fight these diseases. And so we're gonna continue to use it for our GI diseases as well as um, rhodococcus and, um, and so right now we feel like it is a, a good investment. Um, so that's it, thank you.